Thinking Aloud, conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with parapsychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today, I'd like to talk about Rudolf Steiner and Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, the video that was released the day before I will release this monologue is about Nietzsche. I interviewed Adam Crabtree, who expressed his love for Nietzsche and his feeling that Nietzsche could be probably, in his mind, the greatest philosopher who ever lived. And uh, towards the end of that interview, for those of you who haven't watched it, I brought up the fact that uh, Rudolf Steiner, the uh, mystic, the founder of the movement of anthroposophy, about whom I've done a previous interview uh, with Gary Lockman, who wrote a book about Rudolf Steiner, and I'll be linking in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right now to uh, that interview, I think it's well worth watching for those of you who aren't familiar with Steiner, because he, he's a most remarkable character. One might even say he's the embodiment of the Nietzschean Superman, a person of enormous creativity. And Steiner was trained as a philosopher. Steiner met Nietzsche. Steiner uh, was invited to work on the Nietzsche archives by Nietzsche's sister, Elizabeth. And uh, Steiner wrote a memorial essay three weeks after Nietzsche died in the year 1900. The essay was delivered as part of a lecture on September 13th, I believe it was, in 1900 in Berlin. And Steiner, at the conclusion of his lecture, says, Nietzsche won't be remembered as a philosopher with original ideas. He won't be remembered as the founder of a new religion or of a prophet. And Adam Crabtree disagreed strongly with those sentiments. Steiner concluded by saying that Nietzsche will be remembered as a poet who found a way to express his illness and his suffering through his poetry. Of course, there was a lot more to it. Steiner was a deep student of Nietzsche. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, which has generally been translated as uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, Fighter for Freedom, in English. I think a closer translation to the original German title would be something more like Friedrich Nietzsche, an adversary against the spirit of his age. But Steiner uh, was also a great admirer of Nietzsche. He saw in Nietzsche somebody who was willing to challenge the, the basic principles of, of the age in which we lived and even all ages. And, uh, Steiner saw in Nietzsche's struggle, however, a kind of bitterness. He noted that Nietzsche had originally written uh, in praise of Schopenhauer and then turned against Schopenhauer, in praise of the composer Richard Wagner and then turned against Wagner. There was a, a certain bitterness to Nietzsche, but Steiner also understood that Nietzsche was a, a heroic figure fighting against uh, the values that had permeated Western culture, Christianity uh, for one, as Adam Cribtree so eloquently points out, but it was more than that. Steiner saw that Nietzsche himself was personally engaged in a wrestling match with the Antichrist. That's a pretty deep thing to envision. And uh, Steiner talks about, he, he writes about how he met Nietzsche at a time, I think it was in 1896, four years before Nietzsche's death, but well after Nietzsche had entered into a, a state of uh, catatonia, or, or, or apparently a, it would have been diagnosed, I think, today as a catatonic schizophrenic, but Steiner saw what he believed was Nietzsche's spirit. 
Nietzsche's soul hovering above the body, outside the body. So you see, when Steiner met Nietzsche, Nietzsche didn't even recognize that there was another person in the room. They couldn't converse at all. Apparently, Nietzsche was able to eat. He was being fed. He was being kept alive. But other than that, Steiner saw him engaged in a spiritual struggle. He saw the spirit outside the body, but still attached to it. And he writes, and this is quite interesting, he writes that uh, through his spiritual vision, he came to understand that Nietzsche had had a past lifetime a relatively recent, I, I don't know exactly what he means by relatively recent, uh, but I assume within a few hundred years anyway, as a Franciscan monk, an ascetic, a man who used to torture himself, flagellate himself, uh, pray on uh, bare knees on, on uh, uh, rocky ground so that his body was in constant pain. And According to Steiner, when the body is racked with pain, the spirit is drawn to it. The spirit wants to be in the body, it wants to, I don't know, heal, comfort the body. I'm not sure why. I would have thought maybe when the body is racked in pain, the spirit wants to leave. But in this case, no. And, um, Steiner goes into some very deep philosophical arguments about the difference between being in and out of the body. But essentially, he's saying, because Nietzsche spent this past lifetime so intensely drawn within his body and suffering so much agony and so much pain, on the one hand, it made him incapable of experiencing love in the current lifetime. And on the other hand, it made him prone to want to leave his body. That Nietzsche, according to Steiner, had a, a proneness to leave his body. And in, in leaving his body, his soul, his spirit would wrestle with uh, the Antichrist. Now, there's a, some dispute amongst anthroposophists as to who is this Antichrist? <laughs> Steiner develops a, um, a mythological structure in, in which the three great spiritual forces are Christ, who is a balancing force, a force of love, Lucifer, who represents brilliance and intellect and art and passion, but no love, and Ariman, who is really dark, angry. I've interviewed my friend Jason Reza Giorgiani about the uh, Persian deity, Ariman, the Persian demon, Ariman, who he, he describes him, I think he uses the word Angrimenu uh, in Persian. And Angrimenu is an angry man, <laughs> you might say. And uh, our, the spirit of Ariman, uh, according to Steiner, is, is devoted to dragging humanity down. Now, there's a lot more that could be said about uh, the role of Ariman in uh, both the Zoroastrian tradition and in the uh, anthroposophy of Rudolf Steiner. But in any case, Steiner seems to have come to the conclusion that Nietzsche engaged in, in a personal spiritual battle with Ariman, uh, for which Steiner had great admiration. But in Steiner's view, he lost the battle. And that's what led to his supposed insanity. In fact, Steiner even goes so far as to say that Nietzsche, out of the body, wrestling with Ariman, losing the battle, becomes a mouthpiece for the Antichrist, for Ariman. Now, as I say, there's some dispute as to whether the Antichrist is exactly the same as Ariman. In any case, that's where things end uh, as far as Steiner's view of Nietzsche. Then Steiner sees himself as continuing the battle. And furthermore, Steiner apparently, according to uh, 
C.T. Rosell, one uh, writer who, who has written about this, an anthroposophist, suggests that Steiner saw himself, his own past life, as Thomas Aquinas, the great uh, medieval philosopher who uh, uh, brought Aristotle, uh, the knowledge of Aristotle, uh, into Christianity and who was a um, both a student of and an antagonist of uh, the Arabian philosopher Averroes, who also translated the works of Aristotle uh, and uh, was very influential in bringing Aristotle's works to the West, but had a different slant on it. Apparently, Aquinas saw Aristotle's work as affirming the importance of human choice, that our souls evolve, we become who we are because of the choices we make. Whereas I, I gather the um, Arab or Muslim view of Aristotle's philosophy was more materialistic and more fatalistic than that. Well, there's much more that could be said about all of this, but it certainly sheds an intriguing and interesting light on the distinction between an esoteric metaphysical philosopher and, of course, a very heroic and uh, great intellect like Nietzsche. One wonders, uh, is Steiner correct in, in assessing that Nietzsche won't be remembered as a great philosopher? No, Steiner was wrong. I think by all accounts, Nietzsche is remembered today as a great philosopher. And so, one can point to, uh, in, in spite of Steiner's enormous contributions and, and his creativity, I think, is practically unmatched by anyone in the sense that he was an architect, he was an artist, he founded a school of education, he founded biodynamic farming, he founded Eurythmy, a, a school of movement and uh, combining movement and poetry, not to mention the, the philosophical and esoteric foundations of anthroposophy and his work in politics as well. It goes on and on and on. Uh, the man's uh, creativity, once it opened up, I, I think is practically unequaled. So, I, I do consider him a candidate for, if you want to designate someone who is Nietzsche's Superman, and Nietzsche himself recognized that, you know, the Superman was yet to come in the future. It didn't happen in his own lifetime. And, and Steiner's career suddenly blossomed around the same time that Nietzsche died, around the year 1900. That's, that's when he sort of graduated from being a, uh, an intellect, a scholar, a philosopher into being a uh, world-class esoteric teacher. Well, it's a lot to ponder, a lot to think about. Let me leave you with this question. What do you think are the spiritual influences in your life? Do you ever feel like you are engaged in any sort of a personal struggle with the forces of darkness, as Steiner and Nietzsche apparently both felt they were? Do you ever feel that you are aided or hindered by experiences from past lives, as Steiner uh, suggests that he he was aided and perhaps Nietzsche hindered. And what is the role of love in your life? Is love something that you live with or live without? I'll leave you with those thoughts. And once again, thank you for being with me.